Onivia, League of Legends highlights. Team fight impact as the Orn Horn running over the entire enemy team. I mean, I'm just so excited. We were talking about how we're looking forward to junglers in this. There's so many options for Inspired to go to. Playing Sejuani when you have no... That's how big Bolt. work, dude. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Both Junglers are really interested in finding these level three ganks. It's three minutes and they've only done three camps. Uh, oh, a lot of oh, Closer's ready, finds Bolt the Q over the wall. Another auto attack will do it. And Double F gets excited for first blood. They're gonna get one back in mid lane with money going over to Jojo. Not up for you, so I don't think it's gonna be that easy. However, I'm gonna see a replay of how this gank mid happened. Uh, again, super patient by both junglers. You know, it's a bit painful for me to see. Like I said, I jungled a little bit and seeing both junglers show up with 12 CS at three, what, 20 almost? Painful, really. Uh, the little flashless locks, very good chance you'll get a kill there. Now, normally, oh, oh, oh. you're very scared of dying. We may have a roam timer oh, wow. for that silence. Oh, boy. Is that a, a three-man, a four-man play bottom lane at minute five? Inspired and JoJo are ready to go. Devlin's got no way out. JoJo getting his second kill of the match. Five and a half minutes in. Some creative opportunities. And it looks like Hunter EG is going to try and break open the game here, which I do think is necessary. Oh, nicely done. Double it oh. gets rooted up. The damage comes through, but Bustio's got some healing ready to go for him. Double it survives, but EG is not done yet. Double it flashing away as JoJo's ready to go. Just jumps right on top of him, knocks them all down. EG. Get both. Chunk him out. Not a lot of Sejuani players will have the knowledge to just use your Glacial Prison to chunk him out there and set up the kill because he knows JoJo's wrapping around. Oh, later. meanwhile, back in mid, 100 Thieves are finally ready to answer the JoJo problem, and it's Bjergsen getting the shutdown. A critical punish. Always points in every single skill. Azir, right. for example, points in E, it's not a huge deal. It's nice. It's to make sure 100 Thieves aren't able to just immediately trade the mid lane turret back for that Herald. As Tenacity and Closer are going to step up. Someday waited in the brush the entire time. Closer just face checks it, survives a long time. Finally dropped. Someday's very low, but the Super Mega Death Rocket will not be able to finish him off. 100 v 5 but like I mentioned, even though they're 3v5, there just isn't enough damage to burn down this Renekton just yet. All right, we got ourselves a dragon fight. In the meantime, it's going to be stolen away from evil geniuses. It was 100 Thieves trying to make that happen, but EG has the better smite here from Inspired, and it means they're going to equalize the Drake count, stop the 100 Thieves dragon stacking. 3,500 gold lead now. They're going to take the blue buff too, and they're not done yet. Closer wants to get away as Busio flashes out. The lockdown comes in. He slams him into the dirt with his own ult. Ultimate, six to Much two. More difficult for 100 of the Thieves to defend these side lanes because they've lost their defense in mid and it's gonna flow into the other sides. So let me ask you guys then, what does 100 Thieves need to do to stop? Silas has an effective health pool that's much larger. So Silas is, can take damage and dish out damage this early in the game. The Rod of Ages, so there's even more inherent value in there because of the time that he got the early gold. How many dollars did he earn from the first <laughs> Oh boy, I don't know if we have time to ask questions anymore because they're going in on closer. FBI wants to put some distance between himself and the jungler and puts a bullet in his head at the same time. Tenacity getting chased down. He's off the side and alone. He gets enough distance between himself and Inspired. Farming a bunch of gold on Jinx and Azir, and then at this point they might have been able to contest, but because they weren't and they were contesting and losing fights, what ends up happening now is, like I said, we're just back up, we don't care, we've got enough money to cover that. 100 Thieves, they recognize something's up. Closer's gonna lead the charge over towards the Baron Pit. Jojo teleported into the topside river. Vulcan's gonna get jumped on by Closer, but Vulcan has Crown of the Shattered Queen. He can't be bursted down. Closer trying to get away. Ace in the hole's gonna take him low, and Jojo's already killed Double Lift with the AD carry out of the picture. Evil geniuses have to have surely secured themselves a bear. He might. He's very fed after all. Yeah, they're already looking at the oh. transition over oh. to Dragon. Closer, though, gonna sneak in. Closer's thinking about stealing this one away. He knows 100 Thieves is pretty far behind, and a Miracle Steal could be what they need to get back into the game. Bjergsen has to flash to escape the binding from Vulcan that would have connected Gold behind. Evil Genius is about to secure their third Drake. Yeah, we get round two now. 100 Thieves actually all funneling in towards Dragon like they want to contest. Oh, and they find Bjergsen and just delete him. Now I don't know what else they're going to be able to do. Jojo goes into stasis. Double it arms the Chompers. Does he have the damage? Ooh. No! Jojo with a Kingslayer buys enough time as Double it tries to kite it out. But it's a double kill back over to Someday. EG gets three. Yes, they lose Jojo. Twice in a game. Yep. Very, very nice. Nine stacks on his Dark Seal as well, so he's putting it to good use. Um, very good game by EG so far. I really like the fact, like I mentioned, like they've been in control the entire time. They know exactly what their win column is. They know how to play the fights. And actually, I'm quite 
a little bit disappointed by the Heart of Thieves in the sense that, like, I feel like there's been a lot of hesitation on their side. I feel like if they Jinx there instead of, uh, you know, one of the frontline bruisers. I've, I've got bad news for you. It's Grog. It oh, was no. Grog. It was tenacity. Not Hard the ideal the situation. They're going in after JoJo. This could be a big pick here for the side of 100 Thieves. Slow down the EG War Machine a little bit, and Doublelift's getting the money. All 300 instead of 700, but we'll take that. Very important kill. Pivotal when you get Baron buff. One of the most important things is that you can push in multiple lanes. Uh, as I don't think we're going to base race. I hope not. I do think we're going to recall here. It wouldn't be much of a race. They just want an <laughs> yeah. objective bounty set down there. So they, yeah. they're taking the I think they're going to try to take two towers here. I actually think they're going to drop their inhibitor. And uh, I don't know if EG is going to be OK with that. I think they, they're looking for more. Yeah, they're, they're called bluff right there. Yeah. Jinx isn't here. You've got no damage. We're going more. This feels wacky a little bit. Uh, first Nexus turret. There it goes. Drops to the enchanted cannon minion. 100 Thieves, they got a 5v4, but they can't just run straight into Evil Geniuses. They're still so far ahead. They're seeing if there's any way to maybe catch a straggler here, but they're not going to get it. So 100 Thieves, yes, they take the one turret in mid lane, Tenacity. but they lose a lot for it. Tenacity wants the flank. He's coming FBI. with the teleport. Closer's looking for the angle on Vulcan and FBI. If he can find it, FBI's going to be juggled around with the damage over the wall from Bustio and Bjergsen. FBI's killed off Closer, but he's going to be traded back. Now JoJo's ready to join the fight. Vulcan's laser hits no one. Someday, keeping everybody distracted for now, we got ourselves a four. 100. EG forces the Baron and tries to flank them. EG is forcing the Baron on top of a control ward from 100 Thieves. So the Thieves are aware of what's going on. Yerkson, half HP, chunked out a little bit there. Evil Genius is using the Caitlyn traps to set up a defensive perimeter and keep 100 Thieves away from this Baron. It's still at about 7,000 HP. A couple more seconds going to be required to burn it down all the way. Jojo wants to be able to keep Closer out of the pit. Closer's ready to go in and challenge. Jojo's taken low, but the Baron is secured by EG. Nice rocket timing from Doublelift to kill off the enemy mid laner. 100 Thieves have that they are able to get off because I don't know if Evil Geniuses are going to be able to make that Baron buff worthwhile. Remember, they only have that one Nexus turret remaining, so they've constantly got to be respecting this split push. Always keep eyes on Jojo. Speaking Always. of which, this is now our longest game of the split at 44 push, minutes Baron. and 44 seconds. Evil Geniuses is pushing into the base of 100 Thieves as 100 Thieves goes after the Baron. Inspired wants to try to stop it, try to steal it, just try to buy a little bit more time. Going for the, the Baron's going to be secured, but he's going to win the lose. game. They take out the enemy head. They're going straight for the Nexus. We win. 44 minutes for that! <laughs> Evil genius! Oh, get no away! Way. Oh. No way! Onivia, League of Legends highlights. Or simply do not respect that spacing, but Immortals, Immortals okay. do not have a lot of super late game outs. This is a turbo charge. We gotta go before yeah. they can team fight as well. Okay, so we've got our solo laners hitting level six. Jungle's around four and five. Maybe we get some action here in bottom lane. Speak is thinking about it. Flash! Whoa! Follows him all the way back underneath the turret, and they're ready to follow up here with a Zaya Rakan. Tactical is first blooded, and Spika is once again the best kind of... A lot of stars. It's a star-studded lineup here. Yeah. Um, but he's done a really good job with the utility, and now he's going mid. Oh, Vikla about to get solo killed by a Blaze Olive. Yes, he will. It ends up getting traded because a Blaze Olive has to stay underneath the turret with Spika approaching. It is what I predicted. We're going to get a trade of neutral objectives at the start of the game. Gale Force Lucian. And Akali with ultimate ready for a Blaze Olive as well. I really like this Crown of the Shattered Queen purchase from Vikla. As Prince decides to go in for the fight, and the follow up's right there from Winsome. Fleshy's gonna burn away as Tactical wants to get one back into the Fly Quest AD carry, and he's found it. But now the Culling won't be able to deal enough damage. Envy's gonna show up, try to keep Tactical alive here. Winsome jumps right back in for a grand entrance and a grand display here with a double kill. Envy wants to chase him down, pick this one back up, get Immortals their third kill, and he'll do that. All four bottom laners dead in what became a uh, not ideal for the uh, for the game plan here for Immortals. Let's take a look at this one because Prince gets really aggressive with the attempt to get a really big blade collar. Oh boy, we are just going straight in for the dive here. Impact using the all out to get himself away from the turret aggro. They end up getting the kill. They get everybody away. Vikla's gonna disengage a Blaze Olive, but he wants to re-engage now and keep chasing these guys down. Once he steps out of the smoke, he'll have to be a little bit more careful. Impact jumps back in. He wants to go after a Blaze. Not a lot of cooldowns left on the Akali, but he's got plenty of burst, plenty of damage, or does he? 
No way! FlyQuest just smack him in the mouth! Close. Yeah, I mean, when you're on a Collie and you see three champions with 150 health left, I'm not gonna blame you for going after it, but FlyQuest had the coordination to shut it down. Uh-oh, all out. Impact's ready to go all in here for the fight. 1v1 against Revenge. Dominus, is it enough? Yes, they're gonna lock him down and Kenvi shows up to save the day. Kenvi saves the day for Revenge. Will that result in much? Bottom side's gonna be able to get first tower bonus for the game for Prince. And they're gonna be able to get Dragon for FlyQuest. So it'll be another Dragon getting the tower down and Prince being pretty wealthy. Prince at 162 farm, currently the highest in the game, tied with Revenge. He does go quite nicely with health. Gonna make it easier Let's for him see. to face check rushes, take some damage, and continue to stay out there with the team as well. Impact and Revenge getting in a 1v1, but well, we got a 3v3 back here in mid. Kenby's just gonna be focused here at the very start. Calling from Tactical doesn't get a whole lot done at all, and Prince shreds through that health sponge that is Kenby. FlyQuest pick up one in the mid lane. Meanwhile, down here in bottom, they're looking to make it a second. Revenge goes over the wall looking for the blast cone, but Impact ready to stay right on top of him. Revenge keeps on running. Impact needs to close a little bit more distance. Wants to prime the Q on the Gromp, so he's got the Q3 ready to go. Juggles him right on back and cooks him up. Speaker gets the kill credit, and back in mid, Tactical and Fleshy now have to try to defend. Speaker wrapping around from the side. First turret falls. Tactical dash two items, not so much. Yeah, and here we are. And this is even like reversed timelines. But you know what? Forget it. Play all three lanes, pressure Immortals as heavily as you can. They're gonna teleport, double oh, teleport flank. Man, that blade collar just cut him off. Tactical goes over the wall, but he still drops. Now you gotta blaze Olive in the middle of everybody on FlyQuest. One, two, three, line them up, knock them down, and move on over to Baron. It's way too easy for FlyQuest. Yep, that was definitely a knockout. Double teleport from the side lanes. Are too dang good. And they're about to get even better, building that gold lead. line down mid for two or three respawns in a row. But Immortals are gonna try to dig in, try to defend what they can here. Kenby throws out the ulti, he finds Spica. It's not gonna do a whole lot. The counterattack from FlyQuest is ready to go as Impact approaches on the flank. He's gonna keep Tactical out of the fight. Just jumps into the middle of everybody. Oh. And there goes your shuffle. And there goes Immortals. FlyQuest just slam them in that fight. And they got 5v3 here for the next 35 seconds. Minions, and there's no reason to stop. Immortals getting pushed off their own tower down here in mid while Azir takes care of the top secondary one. Oh no. Max Cole gets himself back away back for now. now. That was a little that was a little scary. Alright, he's, cool. he's cool. Been destroyed. Yeah, brush it off. Same. Now Immortals. Let's see. They keep a Kali split pushing right now. You can see top lane, but Blackwest have so much damage. I don't even know if Kali gets to get up to the turret much less take a side turret for an objective bounty. Yeah. Baron might be gone, but FlyQuest don't even need it. Kenby's here on the front line. He's gonna be the target at the very beginning. Normally, you don't wanna start off going through the tank, but FlyQuest, man, they're so far ahead. Kenby's taken low, but he ain't dead yet. A Blaze Olive jumps in, but he has to immediately jump right back out. Impact nearly killed off by the calling. Tactical trying to defend. Revenge is dead. It's FlyQuest now looking for more as Vikla jumps forward, turn, turns toward Tactical. Soldiers. Catch him for one last stab there at the very end. Impact went back to base. Now he's gonna use the teleport to make sure that minion stays alive long enough to force down the first Nexus turret. FlyQuest looks like they wanna end just right here. A Blaze Olive jumps in the middle of everybody, immediately dropping the stasis so he stays alive. Kenvi's your next target. Impact not afraid to soak the damage from the turret even further. Gets a shield, jumps right back out of the aggro range. Winsome and friends just killing him on the steps of their own fountain. Tactical nearly dead there, doesn't quite fall. But the Nexus is exposed. Immortals are trapped in the fountain. And FlyQuest is just trying to pad the stats a little bit more, get some more of those player of the game, player of the week, get some more statues, man. A blaze all of tactical immortals, they can't get out of the fountain. FlyQuest are just messing with them. Come on, boys, how long is this gonna take? Speaker fires off the ulti there, locks down a couple. Not quite enough damage, the next- I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, yes! Another counter, baby! Okay, Irelia. There's, there's so much Irelia into Nar in scrims. Summit still has a little bit of the bar left here. Jumps in, misses the wallop. Nice dodge. Doka with a sidestep. 
Gets the stun onto Pioshik. Can dash back to him. Wants to flash away. Uses the W to block some damage. Masterfully. But Summit just flings the boomerang for first. The Lamp Scepter. No level one boots or anything. But CLG taking an opportunity to go after the first Drake of the game here. Very fast. We're talking about. And we're already at the point where Akali has hit the growth spurt that you were talking about. So there is that kill pressure. Palafox could go for that. But down here in bottom lane, it's Core JJ getting the hook onto Poom. Yon following it up with a nice arrow. But CLG is ready to complete completely fight this out because they have backup. They've got more men and they get their first kill of the game. It was actually a Eyeballs exposed to be the last Hold. eyeball proc that happens. Rift Herald running out of patience now. Regenerates a little bit. Still at about 2,000 HP. CLG looking Bottom lanes are coming. Oh, one more eyeball does actually open. Arrow from across the map finds Palafox. Flash from Core JJ to follow it up with the chain CC. Beautifully done from Team Link. Uh, Kyoshik is... Hovering bottom. Maybe he's just going for a rap gank after after Dragon. He's going to hide in there. As you can see, Aurelia trying to be a little more aggressive. Ooh, nice arrow from Yon here in bottom lane. Follow up from TL. Can't go after Kalista's support, though. That ulti. Get out of jail free card. Yeah, I love that. True support uh -oh. from Boom flashes in to block it. And here's that dive you were talking about. There's Guess the what? Honestly, beautifully played by Nokia. And trade for it. Rift Road number two, which completely one shots this side turret yeah. and those things are worth a lot of gold especially the two sides. get away from some of Pioshik's burst and then Pioshik also has the disengage in the form of core JJ so both sides have enough backup that nobody wants to fully commit but now they're ready to go on Luger remember he doesn't have the cleanse he had to use it on the arrow earlier so there's no way for him to get out of this 1v3 you're not getting that should be very side lane heavy okay and they're calling multiple members down to Dokla again yeah, and they're just Whoa. following this up, exploding Summit before he has the chance to even transform. They're playing around. So dope. Next file, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill again. Yeah, I mean, CLG have... Oh, never mind. Done. Ooh. Dokla going in very early onto Harry here, but Harry's got backup, and Dokla has to flash away trying to stay alive. Arrow flies in, but doesn't quite hit the mark. Pioshik's got the slow, and Harry's got the damage. Team Liquid got the kill. Good call on the defense. Pioshik and the rest of Team Liquid ready to contest. Dokla arriving on the flank. CLG go in for the fight. The Drake is still at 6,000. It's no danger of being bursted down just yet. Boom goes in, finds a stun on two. Palafox ready for the follow-up here. Goes after Harry. Contract's very low, barely walks away from it. Palafox still wants to find the kill into Harry, but Dokla's already killed off Yawn. Palafox drops. Team Liquid has taken down one for one, and CLG is backing away. The health bars are low, and Core JJ goes in to make it happen. Summit flies over the top, but Dokla's ready to fight back. It's big Dokla, baby! He picks up two, he picks up three. He absolutely smears Team Liquid all over the floor. That's Dokla Aurelia for you. Summit's the only one left alive. He can't steal the dragon. And CLG. I they can actually get this and get out because Summit is yep. peeking in with Mega. All Flash is practically burned from the last fight, but it does look like they're going to be able to get it. They might lose a man or two here. We'll see if Team Liquid's able to collapse in time. Palafox still back in the pit. And he slammed into the wall from the Gnar ulti, but it's a combo. That was one or two auto attacks off being a, a yeah. wipe for TL or a wipe for, for CLG, which in this case... Oh! <laughs> 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 Loves to see it. Holy cow, man. CLG, they're feeling it. Look at the damage on Dokla. 45-11 in that fight as Palafox gets himself a kill on Summit here in the bottom lane. 1,000 gold lead. And now, why not make it six? Turned Again. by Pioshik. And Team Liquid finds a way to force 5v4, go in and grab the turret. Ooh. But Palafox is looking for Yawn. Core JJ with a nice disengage, playing him back. But Dokla's ready to enter. All they're trying to do is keep Team Liquid around long enough for Dokla to show up. And he's into the back line. He drops the ulti. And Luger drops Summit. Core JJ's the sacrificial lamb. And Dokla sends him out to pasture. CLG. Find two more. They have to be able to get the 600 gold shut down, 900 in total for the kill credit as well, onto one of the carries of TL to get enough gold to really turn this game around as they are staring down a Cloud Soul. Oh, not the scariest Dragon Soul, but um, still a pretty nice one for, for all these flanking champions trying to get in the middle. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that was a huge, huge win for CLG. My eyes are just glued to the minimap. Everybody's looking at Dokla. Everybody in the game. Mitting champion like Vi and not die a single time while still picking fights because he's been the main engage for the majority of the game. Boom gets caught, warding all out by himself. No Kalista holding oh. range. Yeah, that was... Uh, Rest in peace. Unideal. Yeah, it was close on screen. Team Liquid has a 5v4, but they got to be careful. Contract's already ready to engage. And Team Liquid has to fall back. Summit's ready to transform. But into the back line goes Palafox. He's going to be taken low, taken down. Team Liquid, they're cutting him off. They're buried.
burying him. It's a shutdown back over to Yon. They've taken out the Irelia. That's a lot of damage there. Baron's down to 3K. Contracts over the wall. Thinking about the Vault Breaker goes in towards Bioshik. They want to focus Contract. He deals the Baron. CLG just stop him in their tracks. Bioshik still tries to fight a little bit longer. Contracts wants to get away. Aftershock keeps him protected. He shouldn't die to this. Yosha keeps going in, but Luger's ready to go right back at him. Core JJ drop. Luger's finding more. Contracts in the front line with a stasis to buy time. And CLG and Luger make pit cushions out of him. Oh my god, CLG three members. They steal the Baron, they clean the team fight, and they wipe the TL base. Man, not, not, not. Oh. <laughs> you can tell, because I know you've been there too, as a jungler, you just get smite stolen against, you know, Pioshek was enraged, so he chased them into the enemy jungle. I was about to say, I felt like he, he was just mad. Yeah, like, you're just oh, pissed. Oh, we're 3v5, why is this guy in the pit next to me? How do you dare you Still do this on stage? Nexus. <laughs> oh. Summit versus everybody on CLG. Palafox just cuts him down. CLG, you know, they only have a few seconds left before the respawn start oh. coming in. So they want to finish this game off pretty quick. Core JJ is the only man standing, throws out the box. Contracts and Poom and Luger trying to put some more DPS into the Nexus. Yes, Dokla finally dies with the Fountain Laser, but it's C Actually peel back yeah. uh, and try to answer that with that Zaya. Uh, <laughs> the Zaya and the Azir trying to control space. Uh, it's going to be more the job of the Jace to play sides and actually try to actually Ooh. just play thing this wave up. Right as this crashes, they want to try to pull off that dive and hopefully for them before Fudge actually hits three. A fudge has got to try to stay the safe as, as much as he can. I think he's going to have to leave. Yeah, coming in for the dive right now. Leading it's going to be Santorin. Has the repel to uh, set up the sour dive with relative ease. And we get first blood coming out for Dignitas. In Jensen uh, will not go for the gank right there. Instead, we're going to get a repay gank coming out from Santorin. Realizes the flash is down for fudge. So let's make it happen again. Fudge, you're going the wrong way, buddy. Sorry. There's no other express route to the respawn than death itself. Our mutt will grab that kill. Yeah, and Fudge, Fudge is actually just trying to fix something after he collects this. He should be down about those two full waves. Uh, so Blabber, going to be able to grab that dragon. Got to hit it one more time. Hey. Going to sink the fangs into Fudge, but the flash will be burnt for safety. Yeah, and, and Fudge may have to actually back off. Uh, we'll see if they can pull off this dive on the bot side, though. Blabber's going. Right, ultimate coming out from Blabber, Berserker, and Sven. Rotating around the bot of Dignitas. Caught out by the bubble, and down spawn will go. Perfect juggling of the turret aggro Sven. Okay, no one gonna fall for Cloud9. Yeah, not gonna look for the redive. They all oh, the hook! Oh, coming in from Ignar! Who will decimate Sven and get something back for Dig? Yeah, that was a little bit of Tokyo Drift coming out from Fudge. Yeah, it looked for a second like he was gonna potentially go for an all-in again, but now Blabber's oh, in some trouble. Oh, Ultimate comes out, Centaurin does not care. Getting caught out is gonna be Jensen. Deplex going hard on to him. Blabber critically low. Santorin with the chase. 100 health remains. Junglers and mid laners dueling it out. Santorin will get the better, though, with one more fang sunk into Blabber. Now Deplex shows up. Wants to clean up the kill, but Armut is there. Walk away. This is great for Dignitas. It's a great early game coming out for Dignitas. Uh, the strongest early game they've had, uh, at least recently, was against Immortals. You know, unfortunately, it went by the wayside. Now they got to hold on to this one and make sure they can keep that stranglehold uh, really locked onto Cloud9. And they're doing a good job of it so far as they try and set up for a tower dive on the uh, Fudge. Fudge taking a lot of damage. We'll get knocked back from that decimating smash, and another turret will go down. How do we follow in through as Cloud9 say goodbye to the inner top? Yeah, going to be able to get both towers off that end the flash off of Fudge. He wanted to stick around. And Cloud9 were moving. Right, Rift Herald will be spawning quite soon. Dignitas might look for some poke as a response. Yeah, they're going to be trying to poke, you know, slowly chunk them down a little bit there with Armut and then use the rest of their Ooh. tools to engage. And they found Blabber now. Knock up coming on to Blabber. Blabber taking a chunk of health, but the bubble is there. But the hook brings Blabber right back to the fight. Spawn with the ultimate will tear down Blabber. And Dignitas, they're going to take another pick. Battle line's drawn right here. Cloud9. Looking to turn this game around. But Dignitas have been in the driver's seat for the most part. Diplex waiting for the team fight to go through. Caught out by the cocoon. Pulled back in is Blabber. Tidal Wave comes in too late because Fudge is down. Now Berserker able to get one right back onto Ignar. With that, one for so one. They can actually move towards that dragon, but they can't really do it just yet. Ooh. They're going to lose mid. 
Now losing mid, Jensen chasing through. Emperor's Divide does not catch out. Another flash comes out in time. Blabber looking for the flank. Fudge. Retaliation from Cloud9. And here comes Fudge taking right on in. Spawn low, Spawn goes down and Sven flashes away. Armand on the retreat. And Cloud9 have something to say about this early lead. They will take it and smash it away from Dignitas. Uh, Cloud9 gets so much back there. The early trade. Having a bit of a laugh and who knows that's not a, a position that they should actually be winning from. But now Dignitas has lost their advantage and Armand's in a lot of trouble with no flash. Oh, in a world of hurt right now with two Cloud9 solo laners on top of them. A shutdown delivered right over to Fudge and Cloud9 have taken this con uh, taken control of this game right on back. Yeah, they're right back in the driver's seat here. This great early game from Dignitas has unfortunately for them been kind of thrown away. They are still up to a 2k gold lead, but it's soul point for Cloud9. You know, their carries are really stabilizing. Berserker is massively ahead of spawn and Diplex is going to become a boss holding steady for the time being. I, I just keep looking at where Fudge is on the map, always so deep into the jungle of Dignitas currently. Blabber looking for the engage. Here comes Berserker. Calling goes out. Spawn so oh, and torn apart once again. He doesn't get to play League of Legends and neither do the rest of Dignitas as they're chased away from the river. And uh, Baron chased away. HP off Sven. And Jensen is here with ulti. They could make something happen. Yeah. Armand still has a lot of fight. Ready to bring. Jensen on the other end. Wants to wail away. Back up. Ooh, it is so bad right now. As Berserker will take another and Cloud is right on him. Spawn is just gone in the hurry. And then it's a full arm retreat here for Dignitas. Yeah. Cloud9, no hesitation, right in on himself. And he can take care of Berserker as well. Exactly. I mean, even if you're behind, it matters so much less than your AD being for them to actually deal with. And it puts so much of an onus on a Jensen and Arma to really be making things happen. Nine soul lane or something like that. Uh, but Cloud9 is, is really kind of checking all the boxes. They're putting take this tower. Yeah, tower taken in the top lane. Cloud9 able to claim it for themselves. They'll get inhibitor on top of it while Fudge pushes into the mid lane. All these waves crashing in and the only response for Dignitas is to continue the split push with Armand. Yeah, it's kind of a flashback to that previous Jace game where Armand was very far ahead. Uh, this TP seems a little bit too late. Uh, the tower, tower will go down, but he is very far up and they could actually look for a collapse. You can see on the map, Cloud9 is coming. They're sending all their oh. members over here looking to try oh, no. to corral Armand. Oh, poor Armand. No, you're far from home, Fell. Oh, God. Oh, God. And it's two beefy boys on top of that. The tankiest members of Cloud9 putting a bouncy house in the bottom lane. Mud goes down and Cloud9 claim another. Yeah, going to be able to grab another. Here comes the ultimate will follow through. Be the next present from Blabber in the top side. Diplex fighting out with Armut. Wants to take the 1v1. But doesn't even need to take it. Cloud9 just want to take the base at this point. Yeah, I mean, Jensen TP's into the pen, but he had to flash out, and now Santorin's in trouble. Oh, uh, the flash from Santorin keeps him alive. Cocoon lands onto nothing. Teleport coming through from Diplex, coming right off of the respawn, and another inhibitor is forfeit for Dignitas. Yeah, Berserker, every single time the rapid fire is ready. Jason chases him back into his base. They don't need the full five for this Baron right now. That's how strong Cloud9 are. Even with the 3k lead, so much control coming out. Now Fudge. Got out topside, has to fight it out with Ignar and Santorin. But again, this is a very, very tanky Scion. And Elise isn't going to bring enough to this battle as the Baron is taken. Now they'll call over Armut. But the rest of Cloud9 have arrived and they're ready for a fight, baby. Tidal Wave going through. Ignar getting chased by Berserker, who will tear away with the <laughs> calling and become unstoppable. Now Armut will fight through with Fudge. But Fudge brought more friends to the fight. So Fudge is going to win double kill for Berserker. Yeah. Dignitas, they won't have Armut. It'll be a four versus five. They want to make a defense, but no, they're definitely not going to make that one with momentum this huge coming out from Cloud9. They're going for the close right now. They'll take down Jensen. Flabber goes on a killing spree. Final inhibitor falls. Next is the Nexus Towers. Yeah, Cloud9 going to be able to close this one out. Looking to move to their fifth win here. Dignitas will remain winless. Now the closing moments, one more Nexus Tower separating this victory. Berserker dancing around the feathers. Victorious EP tidal wave, only to signal the victory of Cloud9, improving to five and two on the season. Here.
Um, but again, can be difficult at times in the 5v5, especially when you're going up against that Lulu, uh, because it takes away that safety that you have when you actually E into a fight. If you have polymorphed in, you can't snap back. Want and you to uh, do the same dance that they did last time and try and uh, give an argument for Golden Guardians not to take this. And that argument comes in the call of the Forge God into the air to the skies. Licorice will go. The Rift Herald will get secured through. Licorice will go down in first blood. Will be secured by TSM. Ember's Divide coming out from Maple. Goes after Gory. Flashing away. He's going to be solo. But Gory wants a piece of Maple. Even with the low health bar. Got no chance. Maple takes the kill. And Huhi and River make haste. They head right for the exit. They want none of TSM. Yeah, Chai. I'm going to hit that slow, but it's not going to be getting kills to be getting gold. And Annie's going to struggle, I think, to really contribute in the, in the same way. So they are going to look for this potential engage off the Maokai ult, but... Oh, he flashes in with Tibbers, lands it onto Chime. Chime trying to survive, has a lot of health. Gory goes in and takes down Chime. Boogie running away with the Cyclone. Neo following suit, doesn't have the ultimate, so doesn't have the extra move speed. Has to use the flash to get away as Ale. Yeah, going to be forced to actually use that flash. So Golden Guardians pushing in. Uh, they're looking pretty happy after that one. They grab the dragon and the force from who he does result at least in some kills. Licorice now with the spot onto Boogie, but Maple is coming. And if Licorice over chases, this could go bad for him. So he's got to leave. Now there's a gator uh -oh. in this jungle, and here comes Solo. This uh -oh. is so painful, man. The crowd control TSM cannot be denied. Oh, uh, Licorice uh, getting a little bit too aggressive there. Going in blind on this move, you know, trying to actually punish Boogie, but you, you don't know where Solo is. You don't know where right. Maple is. Solo, though, could get dove here. Oh, Solo gonna get dived. Four oh, members did. of the Guardian surrounding four. Solo will get taken apart. Stick safe, will receive the kill. Sure, on him, you know, and Gory to get things done because uh, Licorice really hasn't been able to establish much of a lead. More changes coming out from these solo laners, and who he might be trying to find something. He's looking over at the monkey in the jungle, has River right next to him, Licorice not too far off. Maybe TSM go for a fight here. Licorice going for the engage, follows through. River on the opposite end It's going to cut off the rest of TSM and follow through on the charge. Stixay runs in with the ultimate and pops Maple. A double kill for Stixay. Yeah, that's actually huge. The TP wasn't able to be canceled by Solo. We saw that screen to screen, and now the stun lands. Big tippers for who he. Sends TSM fire stuff. Grab the herald, drop it mid. Raid his dragon spawning. Force that response. And with plates falling, they should be able to crack that tower. Inside Orn's gonna go down towards the bot side, and they're gonna look to try to uh, recoup as much gold as possible as they can. Uh, they're fine giving up two dragons. Save the case for Golden Guardian or control position of the map. Uh, TSM, they're looking to still get their solo lane, at least some sort of gold, some sort of lead ahead. Uh, and again, they're not pressured to do it. They can play this game slowly as long as both Guardians are taking too much. TSM are happy to take a fight right here. Teleport's coming out from both teams. Licorice caught out. A lot of crowd control on the Licorice. Gator can't even get close to Maple. Gory shows up, but Solo is taking the damage and will finally get chopped, chopped, chopped away. Gory gets the kill on Solo. They're going to be able to get that kill, but it wasn't about the... Uh, so we'll see how they can deal with that. It does take time, though, to clear out those saplings safely, so that's going to be difficult. Oh. Maple, though, in trouble. Gory on to Maple, steps away from the ultimate, will slide on to the side. Emperor oh. Blood comes out, but here comes River. Mid laner picked off in Team Solo mid down. He's really close to being back up. Otherwise, I don't think he actually flashes that. Yeah. Uh, Solo trying to walk in, clear these brushes, and they're going to look through. for the engage now. Uh, through here comes the Cyclone in the call of the Forge God to the skies. Licorice will go once again, but will survive his plummet back. Golden Guardians going and after the Draken, they will secure it. Dragon Soul Point. How's the team fight gonna go though? Gory steps in and Gory gets three and will decimate Team Solo mid. Guardians finding the win. Oh my god, Gory with the ex their comp. They get the Dragon, they get the mid tier two, they're gonna get the Baron, Woo. and they have taken full control of this game. Eight. Definitely was. I mean, Golden Guardians, 7.3k in the lead. It's been snowballing right now. Maybe a last chance for TSM found on the Team's drop, coming. but getting chased away immediately as the rest of the Guardians have arrived to lay down TSM. Going after Boogie, the tower no longer exists, friend, and neither does your health bar. Yeah, and out of the hole, they get roasted. Golden Guardians has been so fast on these moves. Anytime TSM is trying to look to play towards that side lane, Golden Guardians are really respecting those moves and moving down there as a five-man squad so incredibly fast. 
That's already happened multiple times this game. Now they're going to try to push in here, use the Timbers to tank up the tower, and they're going to look to try to close this one out very quickly if they can. Yeah, mid lane push coming out for Gori in the meanwhile. Golden Guardians focusing this bot lane in Hib Tower. It will fall. In Hib is all that remains to finish the objective down here in the bottom lane and transfer to the mid where Gori sets. Yep, they're going to be able to wall. And it was everything but the kitchen sink thrown by TSM, and they're still empty handed. Yeah, and Gori's behind, and this is going to get difficult, but Maple's going to look to preempt oh, the engage. The nice flash. flash from Gori says no to that. Chime follows through, and so does Boogie. No Cyclone available for Boogie. They're going to try and brew for Scory down. He will say, yes, I want this fight. Almost returns it on the Boogie in the meanwhile. Yeah, almost knocking him down yeah, up here early. So this may be where oh. TSM, the Electa, try to fight. Your two frontliners, Solo and Boogie, waiting to engage for TSM for what could be the last chance to take a win right here. Here comes Call the Forge God. They find Licorice once again. Gory over on the sidelines. Goes after Chime. The fight continuing. Solo getting oh so low. Gets a double knockup to go through. Sticks a runs low as well, but no one to fall in this team fight just yet. Yeah, but they did chunk out Six Eight quite a bit. And oh, oh in goes Gory. Oh, Gory onto Chime. Gets taken down by Neo. TSM, they found something back off the overaggression of Golden Guardians. Yeah, that's the Polymorph I was talking about in the draft. It's really, really punishing when you go in there for the Oni on these points. And even Solo is kind of taking some punishment from it. Solo eating those right on the chin, getting burned away. A lot of that percentage health damage. Here comes Call the Forge God, lands onto no Corey one. on the side. They're secured for our Golden Guardians. Boogie looking to bail on out because there's too much damage that the Guardians have brought. Boogie with the Cyclone. Gory follows through. Sticks A with the chase on the time. Takes him down. He's not a frontliner, but damn, I'd be fooled. Sticks A with the triple kill. What a flash forward from who he's setting him up. Flash forward gets the triple stun with the W and no hesitation from Stixa there. He flashes right on in and mops a mop. Golden Guardians march on the Nexus. Golden Guardians, they fed Stixa 10 0 and 2. It'll give them a big, big dub against TSM.